In this video, I've set myself a challenge. Can I make a full zine in Figma Draw in just one hour? So I'm a UX designer, and I spend my nine to five in Figma making high converting designs, prepping files for our devs, and updating our component libraries. But earlier this year, when Figma doubled their product offering from four to eight, the thing I was most excited about wasn't the new AI features or the new framer clone, it was Figma Draw. And I think a lot of us digital product designers have a real itch to get back to the more creative side of design. So I set myself this challenge, can I make a zine in Figma Draw in one hour? Let's see how I did. And I should say a portion of this video has been sponsored by Flip HTML5. More on them later. So I'm gonna be making a zine about how to use Figma Draw all made in Figma Draw. Pretty meta, right? I'll be using the universal one page zine format. I absolutely love this thing. Using this, I've made birthday quizzes, zines about UX glossaries and collections of life mottos. I've already collected my inspiration and I've got my coffee ready to go and got some snacks with me. So let's get designing. Streets ain't safe, internet wild like a jungle Stream yard panels where the fake thugs mumble Virtual fist stone voices start to crumble Chat room beef, all these egos tumble Keyboard words flex, gossip like some mad queens Sitting in their basements, dirty mattress with no box springs Feeling like they got wings, got wings. So this is the finished zine. I have spent an hour on it and I made it all in Figma Draw. Obviously, I'd love to show it to you, but I can't like pass it through the screen. So that's where this video sponsor comes in handy. So Flip HTML5 lets you create page flipping online flipbooks in a few different ways. You can either create with AI or use one of their templates, or you can just drag in a PDF or a Word document. So here you can see my document has been imported. I can set up my title and keywords here. And then the best thing about this is I can just easily embed it on a website or download it in lots of different formats. I can also change the visibility of the flipbook so I can make it private or add a password. And I can even use their built-in analytics to see how many people have clicked on it. So hopefully once you guys will click on this link, I'll get a few more views for this. So you can see the preview over here. And by far the coolest thing is being able to add rich content. Say for example, I want to add in a video or link out to an example of how how to use this kind of brush tool in Figma Draw. All I need to do is grab a YouTube URL and drop it in here, and then I can make it more than just a flat PDF and then share it with people. So this is a great video from Figma about making lots of different vector brushes and stretch brushes. And obviously my zine page is kind of basic, so maybe my readers would like a bit more detail about it. So all I have to do is drop in the YouTube URL here and it will embed it. And then I just need to hit save and I'll be able to share it with people. So if you've been looking for a super easy way to share documents, PDFs, magazines, or little, little Rezo style zines like this one, please do check out Flip HTML5. And of course, thanks so much to them and their team for sponsoring this portion of the video. So while you're taking a look at this little zine, let me tell you a bit about how I made it and my favorite things I found out about Figma Draw in the process of it. And I should say that this color scheme and this vibe is hugely inspired by an illustrator and artist from Utrecht called Ellis Tolsma. I absolutely love her work, so definitely go check her out. I think she's amazing. So my first impressions of using Figma Draw is that it's really similar to Figma Design. I think because of the way the layers panels work and your properties on the right, even though things look slightly different, it's still really easy to pick up and just use off the bat if you've been using Figma. Starting with the brush tool, I thought this was quite cool. It gives you a very quick way to make something with a lot more personality. But as far as I know, there's no iPad support or stylus support. And I don't love doing this with a trackpad or a mouse. I feel like I'm just so much more used to having a lot more control using strokes. So that's why I love this idea of variable width strokes. I was using a plugin to do this for ages, but now it's all native. So you just hit enter, press this little button, and very quickly you can get something which looks really cool, has a lot of personality, and you can still control all of your individual vector points. So I really like that one. Shape Builder is one of the best things about Illustrator. And I think what's really cool with Figma Draw is they've just taken, you know, the few select tools from Adobe Illustrator and other tools like that, and just made them really easy to use in Figma. So let me show you if I grab a square and a circle and click on both of them and press enter. Before you couldn't get this kind of editor where you got to edit multiple vector shapes in one go, but now I can, and you can see which bits are highlighted. But if I just press this little button, I can draw to combine things or hold down Alt to remove things. And very quickly, you can make really complex shapes. Repeat is another example of something which came out of Illustrator. In Illustrator, it's called the Blend Tool. 
And this is like a super simplified version of the blend tool, but it just lets you do really, really quick things. It's kind of like being able to use multi-edit because I can just edit one thing in one place and it edits it everywhere, but it's just super quick, super dynamic, and you can do loads of different things with it. So yeah, loving the repeat tool. Rotate Origin is something which I wanted to include in this because I didn't know about this for ages and I only found it when reading the documentation. It's not in the UI for Figma Draw anywhere, so you sort of have to know about it. And what it is, is it lets you change the origin point. So normal rotating looks like that. And then if you hold your mouse here just for a second, maybe a second and a half, you get this little point here and then you can move it wherever you want and then it lets you rotate around a different origin. So really, really useful. My one complaint about this is it's kind of a hidden interaction, so you don't know how to find it. There's no clues for how to make this appear. You have to know to hover your mouse here in order to make that little gizmo appear. But it's a really useful feature. And then noise, texture, and pattern fills. Because I was trying to do this kind of Rezo style blend mode where I just use a few different colors and set all the layers to multiply, it was quite hard to add a noise example here. But this is the texture example in action, and I think you'll agree that it's just so cool. It gives you this vector texture effect, so it doesn't increase your file size massively. You can make really cool different things here. Along with that, we've got pattern fill, and we've also got progressive blur. So there's loads of cool textural things coming out in Figma Draw. So overall, I've been really impressed with Figma Draw. I think it's just brought in a select set of features from tools like Adobe Illustrator, which means you don't have to keep swapping between software. You can add text to a path, make wiggly dynamic strokes, use brushes and blurs. And what if you get hooked on it? Obviously, it's part of Figma's plan for design tool world domination, as we've seen with their IPO. I've had a blast doing this challenge, and I hope you'll agree that this finished product is quite fun. Obviously, this is just printed on a normal laser color printer but I would love to actually split out the color layers and send this off to a Rezo printer. So if that's something you'd like to see, if you'd maybe like to get a copy of one of these, just let me know in the comments. But anyway, that's all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you again to Flip HTML5 for sponsoring this video. I'm still trying to grow out this channel and make interesting design tutorials and challenges and videos for you guys. And the absolute best way to help me out on this is by sharing this video with someone who you think might be interested. So if you're a power Figma user, but you've not had a go at Figma Draw, and you've got friends in a similar position, just send this video over to them. It would mean the world to me. Thanks so much, and see you on the next one.